Hi, my name's Rose Little, and I'm going to talk about the El Dorado Textile Project at ASA Brazil. This is ASA around the time I first visited, which was in 2016. Here's a view from ASA looking down from an upstairs window onto the street, and higher up you can see part of the community of El Dorado. A couple of street views close to ASA. This blue house gives you an idea of what the street might once have looked like. Another view posted by one of the women's group on WhatsApp. There's a lot of street art in El Dorado. The shops and bars don't have glass fronts, they just have shutters, and a lot of these have pictures painted on them. There's also a lot of graffiti. So, my first impressions of El Dorado. Overpopulated, makeshift, a little bit edgy, but also colourful and vibrant, with a lot of character. And there's a lot of colourful activity going on inside the ASA building as well. This is Sara Santos. She's an old college friend of mine, and she's working here on a project that was designed and made by the ASA community under her guidance. Her project was based on drawings made by the kids and translated into textiles. On this panel, you can see a game being played with balloons and chairs. By December 2016, Sarah's project had been completed and hung from the ceiling in the games room. There were two women's groups involved in her project and we decided to use her leftover funds to offer them a few more workshops so that they could carry on developing their sewing skills and possibly earn a small income. So, with the help of ASA, we took on a local freelance textile teacher, Carol Cancio, and we founded the El Dorado Textile Project. The project started in March the following year, with around 20 women and children. These two lads are part of Guardian Families, the Kinship Care Scheme, and they're the grandsons of one of the women. We wanted to form a supportive group and to give the women a chance not just to earn a little bit of extra income, but also a chance to be creative. A few of them had sewing skills already. Most didn't, but they picked them up very quickly, despite the fact that some of them had told Sarah they would never touch a needle. Carol had the idea of embroidering over a traditional Brazilian floral fabric, sheeta, and this resulted in some very attractive cushion covers. These are two of the first ones that they produced. By 2018, the group needed more space, so they moved into a bigger room on the ground floor of ASA. They started to experiment with patchwork, but they also continued to make the cushion covers, which sold well at coffee and craft sales in Europe. During the winter break of 2019, Carol encouraged the group to draw their own designs based on childhood memories. These are two of the embroideries they made, happy rural scenes which make a poignant contrast with their current crowded homes. Towards the end of 2019, they started to sell successfully at Christmas craft fairs in Giadema and in San Paolo City. This is a little Christmas celebration they had after the craft fairs in the refectory at ASA. And then COVID-19 struck. 
In March, San Paolo State announced a period of quarantine and ASA had to close. But just before it closed, Carol went to ASA to distribute materials to the women's group so that they could carry on sewing at home. For the next few months, they stayed in touch with Carol via their mobile phones. Some of them couldn't manage to sew at home with all the other many things that they had to cope with. But most of them found the creative hand stitching a great help in coping with the quarantine. These photos were also sent by their WhatsApp group. During the quarantine, work started on the conversion of two adjacent teaching rooms into a dedicated textile workspace that could be used for both the women's group and for a new vocational course in textiles and fashion for local young people. This was made possible by a generous donation which also covered the cost of industry standard sewing machines. By the time ASA was authorised by the local authorities to reopen in October, the new workspace was ready. Carol sent this selfie on 26th of October, when the women's group were finally able to meet. Their policy is to avoid waste and to recycle where possible and their first task was to sort out bags of fabric remnants that had been donated by a local fabric supplier. Some of them took the opportunity to try out the new machines. The group is currently using the new facilities to make masks and sports bibs for the children and young people of ASA's large sports community. Here they're cleaning the room during the break following both World Health Organization and local municipal guidelines. Finally, here's our group of teenagers who've now started their course in textiles and fashion. This course also places emphasis on sustainable and ethical textile practice and will include, for example, the repair and recycling of garments as well as the design and making of them. So what started as an idea to deliver a few workshops in textile skills grew to be the El Dorado Textile Project, which is now in its fourth year. I feel privileged that I was given the opportunity to become part of ASA and of this project, and I'm delighted to be able to tell you about the progress we've made since we started and about these latest positive new developments. Thank you.